Hi, this is Seven Seas Cruising Association, and this is the Cruising Host Series update on COVID in the Caribbean. Our panelists are from the Eastern and Western Caribbean, and I'll introduce them in a moment. I'd like to thank our sponsor, Nautic Ed, who has allowed us to produce these um, events as a sponsor. I'm going to stop the share and then introduce the people on our our event are we still here yes we're recording yeah, yeah, we're, we're, we're on we're live now guys so we have john haley we have john haley from columbia and he's on the top left i'm in the middle joan conover captain joe kapinski is on the right at the that I believe that's how it's set up, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming. Captain Joe Kapinski is from Antigua. Ian Gifford is in Mexico. Jesse James is in Trinidad. Bill and Joanne Harris are in the Bay Islands of Honduras. Tutty and Mira Lee, hello. 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 They are in Guatemala and Rio Dulce. Lee Miles is in Colombia and Bill Woodruff is in Antigua. And what I'm going to do is have Behan gives her slides on Mexico that I will run. And then I'm allowing everyone one at a time to give an update on each of their um, areas and the situation. So let me start Behan's slides. And here's it. Yeah, if people can mute, if you aren't talking, that helps us all. So let me share the screen for, for Behan. And Behan, here, I've got your slides. And just tell Beautiful. me next slide. I will. Thank you so much, Joan. You make this really easy. I appreciate it. So hi, everybody. My name is Behan Gifford. I am on the sailboat Totem, uh, Stevens 47. I'm aboard with my family, my husband, and all three of our kids are here right now. We are in Mexico, and we've been in Mexico for almost three years, actually, which is uh, kind of hard to believe because, like a lot of people, we had other plans for 2020, and COVID disrupted them. But what that's given me is both a lot of information about Mexico. Mexico, cruising in Mexico in general, and how that's changed under COVID and where it is now. So let me talk to you a little bit about um, the current situation of COVID in Mexico. This picture you see right here is in one of our favorite anchorages. As you can see, it's pretty easy to self-isolate in places here. Uh, Joan, if you could go to the next slide, please. I think there was one just before this. Other way. There we go. So um, I wanted to start just by talking about the entry process into Mexico. Um, as you know, in a lot of the Caribbean right now, getting into countries can be complicated. Um, there are more steps or more hoops to jump through. You might need a COVID test in hand when you arrive and you might have to get one after you get there. None of that exists for Mexico. Come on in. <laughs> Mexico right now um, requires no COVID test for entry um, and none taken after you arrive, which is both awesome and maybe a little scary. Uh, and we'll get to that part. But since we're talking to a Caribbean focused audience today, I wanted to focus on the major Mexican clearance port for Mexico, which is in Isla Mujeres. There's actually a brand new, like not even been done for a month guide um, on this website, Sailing is Truth. <laughs> and he has written through all of the steps for clearing in. It's really intuitive. Um, it's not a difficult place to arrive and it's even more easy than most places under COVID. Next slide, please. 
so this really was just my my welcome into Mexico to say, come on and jump in because it really is so easy here. Now, the scary part perhaps is what's going on with COVID. And as you can see, we're managing that largely by staying in places that are relatively remote, um, which hasn't been hard to do. There are thousands of miles of coastline. The area cruised on the Caribbean side is a little smaller, but there's still tons of room to explore and to be off entirely by yourself. Next slide, please. And just a snapshot of what it's been like. We do still have cruisers here um, currently, but there's just not a whole lot that's happening. Um, and uh, in the cruising community in general has uh, been reduced during COVID. Um, even with folks coming down the West Coast, and this would apply maybe in uh, the Yucatan to folks coming over from Florida, they're just, people are tending to stay put more than anything um, because of the uncertainty around COVID. And we think it's actually a pretty lovely time to come to Mexico because of the ease of entry. Next slide. So what do you have to deal with when you get here? Well, masks are required pretty much um, in, everywhere in most states. Um, and so here's Jamie getting uh, more fuel for Totem, just wearing his mask at a fuel station, just a typical cruiser picture, COVID style. Next slide. And here's me buying vegetables this summer. This is actually during a period of lockdown when you are only allowed to uh, go about for more essential activities. Of course, getting food is an essential activity. Um, and one of the real bright sides of COVID for us here was that it enabled us to connect with local producers that meant we actually had access to better food, more beautiful produce than we've ever had before. I'm buying vegetables directly from a farmer here, Luis Bastida. I can't wait to buy from him in years ahead in Mexico as well. I probably would never have met him if it hadn't been for COVID. Next slide, please. So another aspect of managing COVID, of course, is uh, interacting and cruising is a very, very social um, a social lifestyle. And we simply created our own bubble and hung out on beaches in Mexico and enjoyed that time together. Next slide. So how do you stay in tune with what's actually happening? This is, um, and I'll have at the end of uh, the slides here, a link to where you can access all of this information yourself. And I know Joan's also gonna put it in the notes for YouTube. So it'll be really easy for you to stay in tune yourself. Um, but you can see here, uh, what they call the epidemiological traffic light, the semaphoro, and every state in Mexico has a color code. And with that color code comes a certain set, uh, set of restrictions. And you can readily understand then what are the restrictions where you are that you need to be aware of before you arrive and while you're there? Next slide. So I thought I would go and zoom in on that. When you click on a state, you get to see a state level view. And this is what it looks like for Isla Mujeres. Um, well, Isla Mujeres is actually in the Quintana Roo state, which is what's outlined there. And within Quintana Roo, you can see the, um, the case level information, the confirmed cases over there on the right hand side. That's a continuous graph um, from a forward. And the current status is on the left for not just the state, but individual municipalities within the state so that you can assess where risk is greater. Um, probably not a shock that it's biggest around Cancun. Next slide. I don't know if you can advance me there to the next one, Joan, when you got a sec. There we go. So, um, Vaccinations in Mexico are starting to roll out. They are rolling out very slowly. Uh, this is in Spanish, sorry, but what it essentially says is we're starting right now with frontline healthcare workers, that this spring um, it'll be more healthcare workers beyond the front line, um, that elderly people will be getting vaccinated in the later spring and really sort of progressing out from there. So the general population here actually isn't expected to have full vaccination for over a year. It's gonna be quite a while. Uh, it's just a good reality to keep in the back of your mind when you think about how long the restrictions could be in place here for everyday activity. It's very easy to come in, but you do have to be respectful of local guidelines once you arrive. Next slide. A couple other places to find information I wanted to share really quickly. This is for Isla Mujeres for uh, Quintana Roo. This is the state's website. You can use a browser that translates that right in the page, which is what I did here. So it's a little bit awkward, but it works just fine. Next slide, please. And there on the Quintana Roo page, it actually gives you specifically which of the stoplight colors are they on and what are the things that you need to do. Next slide. 
I find the Facebook pages actually to be incredibly useful for these as well. Mexico's government uses Facebook quite extensively to communicate information to people because it's easy and almost everybody's got a phone. So what I'm showing you here are the Secretary of Health and the governor, Carlos Joaquin, is the governor of the state of Quintana Roo. And both of these uh, Facebook pages are great places to get auto-translated information about the current state. Next slide. And then here is another quick look, actually zoomed all the way into Isla Mujeres. One of the things I think is important for you to understand coming into Mexico is that although there are state level guidelines, knowing what's expected at a local municipality level is really key. Here on the Pacific side, we actually had significant differences from one municipality to the next, even though they were within the same state. So checking at a municipality level is a really good way to make sure you're following guidelines and remaining respectful. Next slide. And that was it. Um, I did see a question that came in here. Um, what if you have been vaccinated before entering? Well, it's irrelevant. Um, because nobody in Mexico cares if you've been vaccinated or not. Um, they're not asking you to take a COVID test uh, before or after you get here. So if you can get vaccinated before you enter, uh, good for you. It'll be one of the things that we actually have to figure out from here. We don't know that we'll be able to get vaccinated here. And our family figures we'll probably be going back to the States to get that taken care of. So the short version is Mexico's open, easy to get here, some things to be mindful of after you arrive, and on sailingtotem.com slash COVID, I'll have a list of links so that you can get to every one of the resources that I showed in these slides. Thank you. Thank you, Behan. I'm gonna stop the share and it'll put us all up again. And um, that was a very good roll up for, for Mexico and probably a good start. Joe Kapinski and, and, yes. and yeah, how would you like to take over now for this, for your part and then we'll, Bill Woodruff, you and Bill can talk that both because you're both in Antigua. Well, um, Bill has come in through the process. And so maybe if he would talk about uh, the process and I can just give kind of an overview of how things are being handled by the government. Um, Bill, I can't hear you, but if that's okay with you. Yeah, can you, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now, Bill. I can even okay, see you, good. my God. Yeah, um, okay. Uh, shall I go first, just talk about the, how the government is doing things, and as you came in recently, you can talk about that process? Sure, yes. All right. Um, uh, the government here is taking uh, the virus very seriously. Uh, back in March, like many Caribbean countries, it, it totally shut down. Uh, both airports and seaports. The only thing allowed in were uh, emergency uh, materials and uh, those things necessary to keep life going, like food and other other commodities here. Uh, Antigua is now open. It's open to pleasure vessels. There are no major cruise ships as yet. I think that will be a while. Um, there are nine active uh, coronavirus cases on the island. I think four of those are in hospital and the rest are in self-isolation. Uh, there is a, the government keeps a dashboard as they call it, of the running statistics of the situation on the island. It's not split up by section, uh, but it is uh, what the situation is on the island and they're quite uh, concerned. Uh, I'm sure uh, we'll get into this later, but uh, when you come in, you have to have a seven, you have to have a, a test within seven days. It has to be administered by a health professional. Uh, at home test or these uh, instant tests are not accepted. Uh, and so uh, that has to be within seven days. You are screened, which is essentially your temperature was taken. You fill out a health form, which essentially asks tries to gauge if you have been exposed to coronavirus that has been close, close company or cared for someone that had coronavirus. Uh, and at that point, they make a decision as to how you should proceed. On boats, you will likely be told that you have to quarantine on your boat. Uh, your time at sea will likely be counted uh, between Antigua and your last land point. Uh, there is a 
bubble of uh, Caribbean countries. Uh, all the bubble does is make sure you it eliminates you having to be quarantined when you go to another bubble country. So if you go from Antigua to let's say uh, St. Lucia, uh, if you have spent 14 days in Antigua, you show up at St. Lucia with a new COVID test. It does not eliminate the COVID test. And you were found not to be a problem health issue at your arrival, then you can go into St. Lucia and you will not have to quarantine. All the bubble does is eliminate the 14 day quarantine from bubble country to bubble country. If you stop anywhere else in between, that breaks the bubble, so to speak. Um, also coming into Antigua, uh, which I'm sure Bill will get to, uh, you need to use the EC Clear uh, system. It helps you uh, get your paperwork in in advance, uh, but you will still have to do a health inspection once you arrive. Um, other than that, um, oh, for the test, all those on board 12 years of age and older must have the test. Below 12 years of age, you do not have to have the PCR test. Uh, there are four ports of entry in Antigua, but there are two, well, the two main ones will, are English Harbor. The other one is uh, St. John's, the Nevis Street Pier. Nevis Street Pier is a cruise ship dock or cruise ship pier, but there is a small floating dock to the port side of the Nevis Street Pier. Uh, you'll probably have to get up onto it before you see it. And you are supposed to announce your presence to the Antigua Port Authority by Channel 16, BHF Radio, uh, at least six hours before arrival. Uh, that could be somewhat problematic because both uh, English Harbor and St. John's are surrounded by hills. So you're not going to be able to make radio contact till you're fairly close. Um, and they will tell you where to proceed. Uh, if given the option, I would always recommend coming into English Harbor. It is a small boat area that is small boat friendly and there are facilities close by to the water. St. John's is a commercial port. Uh, there is a new port of entry that is opened. It's called the um, Crabs Peninsula. Crabs is a generally industrial area and I would not advise it either. And I have not talked to any uh, private voter that has actually tried to enter through Crabs. Jolly Harbor is not open for entry. You can enter through Barbados, uh, Barbados uh, through Baru, uh, Barbuda. There you go. Um, other than that, um, all right, Bob, you've actually entered. But anything I left yeah. out, or you need to add? Yeah, um, yeah. We came up uh, from St. Lucia in November, early November. Uh, and we got a COVID test in St. Lucia in Rodney Bay. Very easy to get there. It was $100 per person, U.S. Uh, and it was good for seven days until we get to uh, Antigua. Uh, and as Joe said, we had to go at that point. Uh, only St. John was open. So we go there. Um, very easy to anchor. Uh, it is the cruise terminal, but they do have a small dock that you can get to by dinghy. You have to anchor and then dinghy in. We tried to call them, as I said, six hours before, but of course we were six hours out of uh, out of there, uh, and nobody was answering. And when we got there, nobody was really answering either. They just said, "Well, come on in," and that's fine. So we did that. There was a Saturday morning, and uh, we went in. Uh, you have to uh, clear in uh, first. You see the health. You have a form to fill out health. Uh, we had our certificates for the COVID. Uh, and then we saw uh, customs and immigration. Unfortunately, and after all that was done, actually before we got to saw customs and immigration, the health inspector wasn't there. They went home for the day. It was at two o'clock in the afternoon. So this was Saturday. So we had to come back the next morning and, and to get that done. So we stayed overnight in St. John. Anyway, we got cleared in 
problem mm -hmm. uh, and we're good. Uh, we then uh, proceeded, since we had the COVID test, we came from St. Lucia, we were in the quote unquote bubble, so we didn't have to uh, quarantine. And so we uh, sailed around to Jolly Harbor, eventually Falmouth and, and so on. And uh, since then we've been up to Barbuda, we've been completely around the island, there's no restrictions as far as sailing in that sense. Um, ashore, it's like every other island, yes, mask are mandatory, uh, washing your hands before you go into a restaurant, and things like that. And there are restrictions uh, as far as beaches, like during the holidays, Christmas, Thanksgiving, uh, they closed the beaches, which was kind of strange, but that's what they did. Um, in fact, on Thanksgiving in uh, English Hall, in Falmouth here on Pigeon Beach, uh, some cruisers came ashore and uh, gathered. They were going to have a potluck on the, on the beach, which they started to do until the police came down and chased them off because it was a holiday. They said you couldn't do this on the beach. Uh, so, but other than that, um, uh, again, um, restaurants are open, uh, and, and as long as you have uh, masks. Again, there's a restriction, even in, in uh, the number of people at a table was restricted. Uh, the, uh, land, uh, the, in the Antigua Yacht Club, um, uh, yes. Broadway, I mean, uh, the uh, restaurant up there, one night was fine. They came in and the inspector found more than 12 people at a table and they basically closed the restaurant for the rest of the night, kicked everybody out. So there are, there are, uh, they're pretty concerned about that. Um, and, but otherwise it's, it's like I said, it's fairly easy to get around. Now, one thing, uh, this is not a direct thing on this, but uh, one thing I have, we're concerned with right now is that our visa when we came in was, is normally you get 90 days, which we did. We came in November 7th. Well, the 90 days is up, up on February 7th. And not only us, but there was about 40 or so uh, salty dog boats, the, the rally that came down about the same time, around, around between that and the middle of November. And most of them know that they're not going anywhere but Antigua. Well, November, you know, February 15th is coming up or 7th is coming up. And the question is, well, we, we want to extend our visa because we have no place to go. And uh, that is uh, the, the item that uh, of, of the concern of a number of people right now of what to do, because we understand that there is a procedure uh, to, to extend your visa um, that you, you need to see a doctor, you need a doctor's uh, uh, letter uh, and uh, obviously a payment, but you also have to go out to the airport to do this, make appointments, you need a photo uh, for your for passport photos. They have to make a big file. We honestly did this a similar thing in St. Lucia. We were there. They normally give you six months free, six months, not nine, 90 days. But after that, we were there for eight months. So we had to do the same thing in St. Lucia after six months. And it was like in, in August, I guess. And we had to go to the main office in uh, uh, um, Castro. Castries, uh, with photos uh, and, and other other documents to uh, to renew our visa. That was kind of expensive. That was two hundred dollars per person per month. So it cost twelve hundred dollars to remain in St. Lucia for another three months, which we had to do because we we couldn't go anywhere else. Um, but that that's the only concern now, and we're we're dealing with uh, trying maybe to. Uh, uh, through the salty dogs or through any organization that says, okay, fine, but why do we have to go to the airport? Can't they do it in English Harbor or something else? Because you're going to have a couple hundred people that all, all of a sudden have to have their uh, visas uh, uh, renewed. And I understand that most of the people don't really realize that this is cruises to not people that are in, Saint, or, uh, in Antigua uh, living ashore or anything else. Uh, normally, in normal times, we would just go to another island, check in for a week or so, then come back and there's no problem. This is a little different. It's a little bit new for cruises here. But other than that, um, we were enjoying Antigua and um, uh, it, it's a it's an opener, it, it's an open situation, but realizing that, um, you know, you have to be careful with the COVID. Bill, Bob? thank you. Uh, yeah, Joe? I was just gonna say, I. Going out to the airport is, is something that I haven't heard before. Um, 
Generally, these are done by the, um, at the main immigration office in town, in St. John's. Uh, anyway, well, Bill, well can, you I, check I, that? can you check pardon? that, Bill? Can you check that? Yeah, I, and, yeah I'll check Bill, that again. Yes. I, the, I don't know in the Salty Dogs, I'll talk to Hank if he is already involved in that and see who of, which of us can do something maybe. If there's well, that Joan, you people. saw you saw my notes, and yeah. I mean, I think if the salty dogs have established contacts in the government who help them come, you know, help that large group come down, that would be a first good step. If salty dogs can do it, that would be my thought. I'll shake some trees. I'll shake some trees. Hey, but guys, <laughs> thank you very much. And Bill, that's a good uh, update. This is Bill Woodruff. I who's at. Uh, where is your bride? Where's Maureen? Is she there? Uh, <laughs> yeah, she's right here. They are on the boat. Hi. Hi. Hello. They're on the boot Kalu boat Kaluna Moo. Yeah, and we're uh, right now anchored in Falmouth right in now. Falmouth. Okay. Well, wonderful seeing you. You can see Jesse James is waving at you. He's from Trinidad saying hi. Yep. Because, yeah, hi, Jesse. Because of bandwidth, I'm going to turn over to Tuddy and Mural Lee because I'm I just don't know how long they can hang in there, they're in Rio Dulce. I have to ask you guys to unmute because I muted you. Did I lose you? Hey, t uh, Teddy, can you unmute? Go to the lower corner and you see a little microphone. There, there you go. There we are, we are unmuted. Uh, so we've been here since October of 2019 and we've, uh, soon afterwards, uh, we COVID started for us. Um, we've lived through, uh, through COVID and, um, it's actually here in Rio Dulce, it's actually, uh, lessening up the, uh, the town south of Rio Dulce has a increase in, in cases right now, but where we are in Rio, Rio Dulce, it is Fronteras. It is in the yellow right now, which means we are decreasing in cases. Um, life is trying to get back to normal here, but it's a slow process. Um, for cruisers coming into Rio Dulce, the, the uh, main place they would come is to Livingston. So that would be the harbor that they first come to. It's fairly simple. You pull into the river, put up a yellow uh, quarantine flag, and the authorities would come out to your boat. Um, all boats coming into Guatemala need a PCR test within 72 hours from leaving their last port of call. If they're leaving the U.S., U.S. does not give ZARPES. So they would need a, a notification letter saying when they left, when they departed their last port of call or, or a marina's uh, receipt from the marina. But if a boat showed up here in Rio Dulce with no PCR test, it can be, they can either take 15 days of quarantine or they can choose to be tested here. Um, the writing on noon site says that it has free of charge at the local hospital. I've never heard that. Um, I believe they would, I believe they would have to pay for that, that PCR test, but, we can find um, out. We can, we can find out for, you know, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, what would you say? Mask, you still have to wear your mask yeah. in town. Yeah. Restaurants are smaller amounts. Um, a lot of people in Front Terrace, because of the flood, I think there's been so many people with bigger problems that a lot of people aren't wearing masks. But if you go to Guatemala City or any of the other, the bigger towns like um, um, Puerto Barrios, um, people are very uh, vigilant about wearing their masks and doing and washing their hands. And um, it's, it's, um, it's still basically COVID lockdown. Yeah, we still have a lot. Yeah, tell us about what damage you had from the flooding of the hurricane there. Um, it, it's, uh, we're in, on Catamaran Island, which is a, an island um, in itself. The resort is on an island. And 
the water came came up here almost seven feet. Um, we're tied to a dock, and right now our boat is even with the dock. And when the water came up, our boat was five feet over the dock. That's how much the water came up. Um, it's just now going down. And in the outlying hills, um, it's still flooded. A lot oh. of towns are still full of mud, scraping mud, mud out of their house. Some homes are not even accessible. Um, there's still, there's, there's, there was 40,000 family, 40,000 people who have been without, without water, without their homes. just, their homes were destroyed and they say it's 9,000 families, approximately 40,000 people. And that's just are in still the, struggling and to, to get their home, to, to get back their home. And that's just in this area of, uh, uh Rio Dulce. So, it's uh, coming back slowly, let's put it that way. Well, you're going to have a clean wake project there and we'll do another webinar and talk about what is projects could be done there if when cruisers can get there. Sounds like they can actually get in there with a PCR test. Yes. And Antigua, yes. Yes. some yes. of the other bubble islands you can get into. Um, yes. Jesse, I'll talk, we'll, he'll talk in a moment, but no one goes to Trinidad right now. And we have Lee and John from Columbia um, I'm going to let John talk first, and then Lee, if you would be kind enough to chime in. And John, you better unmute. I muted you. Can you hear me, John? I think John doesn't know he's been... There we go. Okay. I can hear you. Hello, everybody. Yes, that worked. Okay. Um, I've been in this part of the world for a few years, and also in Panama with Shelter Bay for about eight years, just a couple of years back. Um, Cartagena is different because it's a city. It's a historic city that people have enjoyed as a change of scene from the usual island hopping. So I guess there's some measures people need to take a little bit more caution about. Coming into Colombia, one of the big differences here is an agent is required. You need to employ, contract a maritime agent. And you need to get in touch before you leave your previous port. You need to call an agent, talk with them, find out what they're going to be charging because the, the fees can vary quite a bit. And, uh, and they should give you guidelines about how to enter. There's no requirement for a COVID test at the moment. Although having said that, there's some changes afoot because there's been a slight increase in the number of uh, cases and which has meant uh, recently the people arriving as tourists from the States, for example, haven't required, haven't been required to have a COVID test of arriving by an airplane. Now they are required to have a COVID test 96 hours before arrival. This is not the case with people arriving by boat yet. There's no requirement to have a COVID, COVID test before arrival or when you are here, except of course, if there are any symptoms indicated on board, in which case, yes, and there will be some quarantine measures required after that. But the key thing is really to contact the agent on the website, which I try and keep closely in contact with and run. I try and keep people up to date with the measures that may be of particular interest. But fundamentally, when you before you leave, you need to uh, complete the standard health declaration. You need to call your agent. You need to send your boat documents to the agent copies of, you need to, and the uh, copies of the passports of those that are going to be with you. But fundamentally, the maritime border is open. The uh, fluvial or river borders and uh, land borders are still closed. But when you arrive, remember you're in a city and it's a tourist city. And recently the tourist city has been open to quite a lot of visitors, national visitors in particular and international visitors in particular, for, in particular from the States. So I think you have to be perhaps a little bit more careful in ensuring you wear your mask and uh, applying the standard COVID biosecurity measures in place, social distancing, and certainly mask wearing while you're at the marinas or in public spaces. Um, you see when the tourists come in Fadnatico where I work at the moment, there's an awful lot of tourism, about 50% of the boats actually go out to the islands uh, 
pretty much every day now, because you're in the height of the tourist season, um, with people on board. And once they're on board, all regulations go out the window. They don't wear masks. They're doing what might be called social close bonding rather than social distancing. And so when they come back, my job is to try and ensure they all comply and keep the marina a safe place. But there is a, a difference there. And so I think people have to be a little bit more careful here. In terms of uh, COVID numbers, I actually know very few people that have been affected in any serious way from, from COVID. Uh, there was one local sailor who died, sadly, about five months ago from COVID. But that is the only person within the sailing community that I know of that passed from COVID. And that was five months ago. So I don't think it's anything like an epidemic. I think there's quite, quite a lot of people that have probably been affected asymmetrically without symptoms. Um, and uh, Cartagena, again, you remember it is a tourist city. There is, you can sail to the islands nearby, the beautiful Rosario Islands, and you can find nice isolated anchorages, but there are quite a few restrictions on what you can do there. At the moment, you cannot go ashore unless you go to a private beach or private facility. So you can do, you can just go and anchor there and spend a few nights there, but you can't go ashore. And the same applies to, theoretically, down to San Bernardo. Um, maybe Lee can add some more information on that, in that respect. Um, but there are things people can do. And the anchorage, there's plenty of space in the anchorage. Club Nardigo and the Club Bethesda both have dinghy docks so people can go ashore. There's a very good community, a WhatsApp community, called the United uh, Cruisers Group, which is very effective in providing assistance to people. Uh, more effective, I think, than the VHF net. And uh, there are plenty of people who are willing to help. There are plenty of uh, uh, people that provide vegetable deliveries if people don't want to go ashore. There's a very local, everything is local. You've got a supermarket within two, mi two minutes walk of the dinghy dock. Um, you've got very good medical support here. I think the actual, if you talk about ICU beds, I think we're about 58% occupancy, which is getting to the level where I think people want to enforce a little bit more, more, more regulation and control to bring that number down. Um, but by and large, there's a sense of a degree of normality, but worry that, uh, that there's a new version of the virus which is more contagious, and that has arrived in Bogota, and there's concern that that might come down to the best effective place to move it to. So I think people just have to be careful. You can come to Ghana, you can come to Colombia without getting a COVID test before. And again, no requirement to get a COVID test when you're here. Um, the, uh, but, you know, comparing with, for example, Mexico, with those beautiful isolated anchorages, which seems to be almost ideal in these circumstances. Here we're talking about a historic city arrival, and we can get things done in, at a very good value, a very good price. Um, but on the other side, the agency fees can be quite high, so just be prepared. Uh, when you come here, you can be here in Colombia uh, for 90 days, no, for six months per calendar year. You'll initially get a 90-day visa, and that can be extended for a further 90 days. But the limited time you can spend here is six months per calendar year. But there are forced mayor. If people are, if we were to, to enter into lockdown again, there'd be no requirement clearly for people to disappear. That would, everything would be, as it were, frozen until the thing opened up again. But I don't think there's any feeling that it's going to go into serious lockdown again. There may be some further measures to slow things down a little bit. But by and large, the city seems to be functioning at about 60%. Uh, and of course, there's some advantages. The old city, I'm sure, is not crazy like it was before. It's a place you can probably walk around quite comfortably and enjoy some of the real history. I'm not sure how the, I think the historic areas and museums are open, but you, in a sense, will get much more of a feeling of what it was beforehand, before it became, you know, very, very touristic. So there's some advantages to be here um, at this time. I would say. And again, John? in terms of numbers of people that I've seen personally affected within the, within the sailing community, very few. Having said that, I uh, had a chat with Juan Borchetti at uh, Shelter Bay Marina, who is the SCCA representative from Panama, or one of them, along with Debbie Seamus. 
And he mentioned that two boats that arrived from Colombia, one that had spent, uh, that had left Colombia about two weeks previously, um, had crew on board that tested positive. And a catamaran, a big 62 foot catamaran, um, also left, but that was uh, about a week earlier. And again, two people on that catamaran were tested positive. So uh, I think uh, eyes wide open, be careful, look out for yourself, wear your mask, social distance, by and large Cartagena, uh, certainly within the areas tourists are likely to be, um, people are conforming to the regulations, uh, wearing masks at least. Uh, but it is a city, so don't, uh, you know, don't escape that fact. John, um, thank you very much. I'm going to turn it over to Lee a little bit and yeah. uh, uh, get input from Lee. Uh, yes, uh, John really has touched on on pretty much everything. The let me repeat that the old city at the moment, because of COVID, uh, is turning out to be. Uh, it does it does appear that basically people in the old city during the day are masking up very well. Uh, there is access to restaurants that are outside. Uh, there are restrictions, but it's it's quite well managed, and uh, and things are seem to be going along quite smoothly. There are some restrictions, and I'm afraid that they're all a little leery right at the moment because they're getting a little bump that seems to be the same spike that everyone has been having as a result of of year end. Uh, but in general, Cartagena is is doing a, a quite a good job. Uh, that's pretty much it for me. I don't need to add too much to what John has said. Well, thank you very much, Lee. Uh, John and Lee, of course, are hosts together there in, in Columbia and really doing a great job. I have not heard anything from Eve, guys. No sign of Eve. She's in French Polynesia. That's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Eve is a circumnavigator who breezed through Columbia with some storms and and Lee and John really helped her. I mean, they drugged that, that poor lady came in looking like she'd been through a washing machine, her boat too. So let me turn us over to Bill and Joanne Harris who are very patiently sitting there in the Bay Islands of Honduras. Um, I don't know which of you want to speak, but uh, please tell us your situation there because it's um, another piece of the pie in the Caribbean. Uh, okay, we just want to be sure that you can hear us okay. Yes, we hear yeah. you. Okay, because we, we want to be sure that, um, because when we were listening to the other conversation, we our calls dropped like 10 times and we worried it was us. Um, it was having a signal issue. And when we heard the conversations going on, it was uh, 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 like this. So we want to be sure you can see us okay, hear us okay. We have a good signal. You have a good signal for me. You have a good you have a good signal. If not, I will tell you. Okay, thank you. Okay, yeah. Um, so we are Bill and Joanne Harris here in the beautiful uh, Bay Islands. Right near, we're, right now we're in Roatan, and we've actually been in Roatan since January 26th of 2020 when we arrived here from Belize. And we um, have, we were here in March when the lockdown happened, of course. So immediately we started doing a lot of um, fundraising and volunteering because we didn't have any cases on the island, but yet they locked down the island. So no one was in, no one was out. We were all here. So even though there were no cases for a couple of months, um, they still locked everything down. So people have been out of work for a long time. We still don't have any cruise ships here, none whatsoever. They don't even have a promise of when the cruise ships will return here, which is based on big time tourism. So then um, we uh, still have cases, but there is a COVID center here on Roatan and there's minimal cases. We must uh, wear masks. Every time we go out, there's a fine. If you go out without a mask, the next time they put you in jail and um then uh, we must do get our hands uh, sanitized every time we walk into a store or anywhere we go. And then we must um, get our temperature also taken. So these are the things that we're dealing with here. They goodness we're on a small island with very few people um, on it. 
but they're not letting boats currently. We know there was something posted about letting boats in, cruising boats in, but then there was a technicality there. The way they wrote it was, um, yes, boats are, can cruise around, but they can't come in from outside. If they do, like... They had a big problem with this because um, they uh, had to go with the port captain and there were immigration issues and all this stuff. Did I, did I lose you? Can you still hear us? Yep. I lost you a little, but you're still there. Okay. Yeah, let me make sure um, that uh, this is going on. One moment. Sorry. <laughs> These technical things. Oh, my God. It's so funny. But this, but this is so beyond what we even know. We can tell you after cruising on a boat for 12 plus years now. And that's doing Zoom. We're like, what is Zoom exactly? We hear about the Zoom thing. And so we practiced today uh, and yesterday with our boat friend down the way. So this is our first official yeah, meeting. So thank you for your patience. Um, but yeah, so um, for us, uh, the cruising boats that are in, the port captain is saying, you're fine, you can cruise around the Bay Islands, but if you're coming in from outside, this is the problem. Yeah, they don't want anybody in. There are lots and lots of flights coming in and out, um, but uh, everybody must, everyone must have a COVID test, like the official up here knows COVID test, not a rapid test, and they must do all this within 72 hours. This is huge. If you don't uh, do this, then you're kicked out. So this has uh, been a lot of problems for people flying internationally, of course. But um, there are a lot of direct flights from the United States and Canada. But uh, people that fly in from Europe and elsewhere are having issues with this. But um, there, but still lots of restaurants, lots of hotels, lots of everything closed down. Lots of unemployment here. Then the hurricane hit mainland Honduras. Huge problems of thousands and thousands and thousands of people are homeless and they're in shelters. So we've been doing lots of charity work since March of 2020 when we went into lockdown. We started doing big time fundraising, um, doing all things that we can. A lot of cruisers, a lot of family, friends, everybody's been supporting this. So we've been pumping a lot of uh, uh, food back into the back into the people here because um, yeah, they're just tourism. 99% is based on tourism, and there's none. So it's been really hard, and we've made a lot of friends here since we did. This is our fourth time to Roatan and to the Bay Islands, but um, we spent most of our time, uh, we spent all of our time here in Roatan this time. So, um, yeah, and if anybody has any questions for us, uh, we're happy to answer, um, answer them for you. There, there seems to be three locations that boats are in the Roatan area. One is West End, and uh, right now, the last time we were there, there was only one boat, and it's uh, on a mooring ball. You have to be on a mooring ball, and I believe it's $10 a month uh, to be on a mooring ball. Technically, there's no... Five zero. There's no dinghy dock available, but uh, because there's no activity, no nothing going on then people are tying up the dinghies that are private and things to be uh, working out okay or tie into a, a bar or restaurant that might be open uh, we are seeing progress that dive shops are uh, being uh, getting customers where they're coming from i assume that they're flying in or they're coming in from the mainland but they are uh, there are dive boats that are active now uh, for the very first time, we found uh, saw a cattle boat. We call it's like our boat, the 49 passenger sailboat, uh, came through our little anchorage area uh, with maybe 25 people. So that was a good sign. Uh, the other anchorage um, is where we are in Fantasy Island, French Harbor, uh, French Harbor, but the island is uh, Fantasy Island, and uh, we have two boats anchored out, and they've been anchored out the whole time. Uh, we felt it was prudent to come into the marina for safety uh, concerns, which never happened. But for safety concerns, we left the anchorage and came into the marina um, for security guards, six security guards on this. Uh, in the day, yeah, six at night and, and uh, six at night and five in the day. So there's eleven total. Yeah. yeah. So we're, we we felt we we're very secure here, and anybody. Once it opens, uh, can anchor in a very protected area by uh, this island uh, area. Then the next one up is called. Um, Wait, 
Yeah, the upper. Oh, down to show. Is this is this the information though that y'all? I don't know. Is this the information they want to show? Yeah. So Jonesville, yeah. the other yeah. location that uh, you can anchor in. Yeah. But again, it's just open to boats that are all here. Yeah. Uh, you're typically not supposed to come in. And uh, we know of one boat that got in and uh, got in by influence of who they knew, where they knew them, and all that stuff. Got in, and other than that, uh, it seems to be uh, you're not welcome. But we don't know. Um, we don't know all of this. Uh, yeah. We'll keep everybody posted when we know boats are welcome. This is super important for everybody to know. So we'll keep you posted when uh, we know that uh, boats are welcome to come in. And we do know the poor captain after all this time we've been here. So maybe he's going to be more flexible, realizing it's important for the economy. And important, like you said, Don, for boats. Because Cuba right now is in Mexico, the other person that spoke about Mexico, this is pretty much it. Because Guatemala, like we were on the list to go into Guatemala. But um, then we were waiting on boat parts and all this stuff. So there is good shipping. That's another thing. There is really good shipping um, coming in uh, from outside into Roatan. All this is still going, um, which is really good for the islands that they still have uh, supplies coming from outside. But um, as far as, uh, yeah, the Rio Dulce, we were going to go there. And then, of course, everybody knows what happened there. So, um what else questions were we supposed to um, answer for you, Joan? Okay. What about provisioning there? Are you okay with provisioning? Excellent. Excellent. Okay. You know, because if you can't yeah. go out to get yeah. food and stuff, that's a bad thing. But it sounds like shipping is coming in there all right. Um, if you had Yeah, to what happened in the beginning? Sorry. Oh, that's fine. Just keep going. On the provisions. Oh, I didn't mean to step you up. There's a delay. Um, but yeah, what happened was in the beginning was, um, yes, when we went under lockdown, they started delivering the groceries to us um, wherever we were because they didn't want anybody out. And then when they started letting it open a little bit to realize, okay, people are just going to go to the store. They're going to go back. This is it. There's no monkey business. Everybody's social distance. Everybody's practicing safe. Uh, passport numbers. Everything. And they were taking, yeah, they were doing it by passport numbers too. Um, you're only allowed on, out on certain days. I know we posted this too on Facebook, but you're only allowed on the day of your number. And if you weren't, then you got kicked out, you know, kicked back to wherever you came and, or you got a ticket or you got your car impounded. A lot of people got their cars impounded or motorcycles. But um, the provisioning for a while was, uh, um, yeah, a little bit different. But now um, that's, thank goodness, it's uh, over with. Yeah, as far as this, in this regard, the mayor and also um, the governor, um, relieved uh, of this to, to kind of a quick summary we have excellent shopping here it's american style uh grocery stores uh at least three and uh there's nothing in there that uh you can't find uh so we have ample food um produce everything is there yeah coming uh, from the mainland requirements again is you have to be uh, uh, tested your temperature uh, hand sanitizer is given to you uh, they wipe down the uh, carts, uh, hand, all, every, after we use it, they wipe it down. Uh, maybe it's just because of us. No. You they, have to step on a mat, too. That's the other yeah, thing. Yeah, it's a uh, Clorox or bleach mat that you mm -hmm. have to step on. Um, they uh, no longer have restrictions of how many people can be in a store that's open. All the drug stores are open. Everything is opening up. Uh, if the vendor wants to open a store, he's welcome to open it up. We have a local radio station that is participating in giving uh, free advertising to restaurants and bars. That are uh, just now opening, because like we had mentioned before, so many places are still opening up. You know, there's so many places still closed down or at, they, they suffered a lot out of business even. A lot of places had to close their doors. So they're trying to help and get everybody back on their feet because um, of uh, being closed down since March. And there is a rule that you have to be uh, wearing a mask and it has to be an approved mask. You're, they don't tolerate wearing a bandana bandana around your, uh, or something else over your face. It has to be a, a, a K95 or a fabric mask. Uh, if you don't, they'll give you a fine. I don't think tourists or visitors uh, such as ourselves would be fined. 
uh, might be arrogant on that, but I think that uh, is my opinion. Um, we have a little bit of crime, but it's mostly local crime. Uh, we have heard of nothing crime against any boats. There's been no theft of outboards or anything like that. Yes, there was. Yeah, there was. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, West Virginia, so, uh, there was. Yeah, mm -hmm. very, very good, excellent review on the situation there. We look forward to you being also a clean wake project. So we'll do, we'll follow up with you later with both uh, Teddy and Mural Lee uh, with the clean wake effort along with Sea Mercy in Fiji, all suffering. I'd like to turn around and go to Jesse James. I know we can't, no one can go into to Trinidad right now, but would you give a quick update of where you're at? Jesse, as far as uh, I know, congratulations for being elected to the board. Can you hear me, Jesse? Jesse, turn up your sound. Do we have a problem with your sound, Jess? All right, can you hear me now? Right, yes, we can hear you. Okay, I'll take just a go to the head, please. Well, a happy new year to everybody, and um, great, you know, just good, good to see everybody and, and hear all the various updates. And like you said, Joan, nobody can come over here, still borders, see borders are still closed. Well, Captain Joe, your, your flag needs to be turned this way so we can get the crown over your head. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, Joan, uh, borders are still closed, um, both sea and air. Um, nothing has changed as yet. They were. You know, there's some with, with the development of the new um, strain that's been happening in England and different places. They, they, they start to talk about further, you know, keeping the borders closed. Um, with that, that strain, because you know, there's a lot of travel between Trinidad and UK and the US and, and these places. Um, like, you know, Joni said, we have, we have a, new, a new board and it's a way more vibrant, you know, energized board. Um, so we have we have done a couple of things since um, November, yeah, okay. and we've written to, you know letters to the Minister of National Security, Minister of Health, the Attorney General, and finally we wrote the the, the Prime Minister also, in you know seeking to get some sort of meeting to find out you know where do we go from here. Um, the population is the, the numbers have been lowering, stabling right now. You know we just have, have three hundred nine cases. In total, as in total, the daily numbers have been going down, but 309 cases, um, there have been 127 deaths. Um, so it's it's a total of 7,210 um, cases um, in total since the, it, the COVID arrived over here. So the numbers have started to stabilize, but the government, and they, they're very concerned about that new strain and they want, to, they want to keep the borders locked down. Like um, Bill and Joanne said, and a couple of you all said, you know, the, the small islands have early o'clock locked down and kept the borders closed. So nobody has been allowed to, to move back and forth. Um, so we're making representation and lobbying and petition. And the strategy was to write all these different people, give them a chance to, to, um, to respond and reply. And if no, um, no respond, no reply. We just want to sit down and talk and find out what can be done and what could, you know, happen. And our next step, you know, step, I'll put up your, all the updates on my website. We're going to, you know, do some press releases and start, you know, going in the direction of, um, you know, getting all voices heard out in, in the press. Uh, we already had somebody, an economist, spoke on our behalf in an article yesterday. And I spoke to her today again, and she wants to meet with us again um, to do another article. And um, just to, you know, to sensitize the population about how, and this, you know, in Trinidad over here, the, the protocols, we did a, a proposal to the chief medical officer, which is the science that the government looked to for all industries reopening. We got the approval in August on all of this. We spoke about this already, Joan. Um, and that nothing, you know, it nothing has happened since then with them, but we just like to, um, the whole procedure, if, things start to happen and roll over here. It's so um, easy and safe. And that's what we're trying to get across to the, to, the, to the government and the authorities. People coming in here will have to go quite Chaka Chikari. And Bill and, Bill and Maureen, you'll know, those of you who've been here before, Chaka Chikari is a couple of miles from the mainland. 
And when you arrive, you'll be under the watch of Coast Guard. You have to file a float plan, so it's very controlled, you know, if and whenever it should happen. And that's what we're just trying to meet with the authorities so they can listen to us. It's a low hanging fruit that we, we've been talking about to pick to get the economy going, foreign exchange uh, rolling. Business has been really, really tough, you know, for people. It's a high price for pain to be where we are today. And I, I would say we, the government has done very well in keeping us safe and keeping the island safe and so on. Um, but, you know, somehow we need to start to get things rolling again. Um, well, when you have a chance, we'll put, we'll follow, as soon as you hear any news that's of an opening or a possibility that uh, things will change, and especially yeah. if anything happens where boats have to move there suddenly from one reason or another. Um, yes. Yeah, we will, um, I think we'll, you'll be in touch, you'll be in touch with us with Noon Sun. Yes, for sure. And letting us know, and yep. we'll follow up with that. Um, mm -hmm. Having said that, it's been an hour, and yeah, I'm watching this time here too. I'm rolling. I'm going to try to roll this up. But does yes. anyone have any questions of each other? Now, all of you are muted, so you can unmute if you have a question to ask someone else. I don't see anyone. Joan, I don't have a question, but one thing oh. I didn't, I forgot to mention is, uh, I think people are here now, wherever here is. Uh, they're here, it, it may be too late, but people, if you're talking people coming this way, I think they should look into the idea of medical evacuation insurance. Uh, it's gonna be very difficult to fly out of, I would say Antigua or any of the Caribbean countries. If you have something as, you know, like a cold or the flu or pneumonia, simply because you're going to, you're going to look like COVID. And so I think especially, and the more health issues you have, if you're diabetic, if you have other things like that, I think you need to give that some consideration. Many people cruise with it already, uh, depending on the parts of the world you're in, but I, I would give it some thought. Hey, Joe, thank you for that. We I have been talking to some of the insurance companies, and I think there's going to be some um, presentations on that. I probably will grab Behan for that, too, on the medical insurance, but things like GEOS, which does medical evacuation. Some of the insurance companies do medical, but all of them are terrified about COVID because it's expensive. Yeah, true. So I think it's going to be, um, um, you know, it's, you're going to have to really be careful what you look for. But that is a really good topic to bring up and um, for consideration. Does anyone have any questions for me before we uh, end the session? Hey, hey Joan. Yes. Right. So j just one comment again before I, I, you finish up with me. Um, the latest over here with um, people trying to get entry to here is go to my website and you'll see there's a, a form for request of an exemption. You need to um, go to the website, click on it, fill it out. It's very simple. And that's like a, a, a request for an exemption. And it's going on all under YSAT uh, to, to the government for anybody who does the proactive plan, we take the approach we're taking for whoever may want to come over here. Well, good, right. Jesse. What we'll do is we'll post that link on YouTube, yes. and Behan's going to give me some links. Bill and Joanne, um, the Lees, uh, John, if you have links, um, Bill or whoever, we'll just post that on YouTube links so that they that can be right. with this video. So thank good. you very much. I appreciate it. We're going to be doing some clean wake efforts as things open up and volunteers can come somewhere. Or even if they can't come, maybe they can help one way or another for both the Lees and the Harrises wow. as they try to help those communities. Because it's it is not fun, and there's not a lot you can do sometimes. But just the being there sometimes helps. So thank you all very much, John Haley in Columbia, Jesse James in Trinidad, yes. Joe Kapinski in Antigua, Bill Woodruff and Maureen and Kalunamu in Antigua, Teddy and Mira Lee in Rio Dulce. Bill and Joanne Harris in um, Bay Islands of Honduras, Behan Gifford, and I'm not sure where you're at, <laughs> but it's in Mexico somewhere, and Lee Miles, my buddy Lee, who always answers the phone or the email there in Colombia, Mr. Emerald, thank you very much, everyone. It's appreciated. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Bye, all. Bye.